I'm Eric Overby. I'm the Catherine and Edwin Whalen Professor. I'm Sri Narasimhan. I'm the Gregory J. Owens Professor of IT Management at Georgia Tech's Scheller College of Business. As a society, a lot of our activities are becoming digital. So if someone has issues in accessing communications technologies or information technologies, that could put them at a disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis their peers who have access to these. Digital inequality is an issue that needs to be addressed. Digital inequality refers to gaps across different populations in their ability to access and use the internet. Historically, a big gap was physical access. For example, rural households had more difficulty getting a connection than urban households. Those gaps have closed. Most households in the U.S. have internet access now. So the inequality now is more around the ability to use the internet for productive purposes. So the inability to have good quality internet access is a problem. It keeps people that are already behind. It makes them fall arguably even further behind. That became glaringly apparent with the lockdowns due to the COVID pandemic, when schools and work routines shifted to online. And it became very clear that a lot of disadvantaged households didn't have the same quality internet access as advantaged households. A lot of households are what we call smartphone dependent, that the only way they can get online is through their smartphone and their mobile data plan. They don't have high-speed Wi-Fi at their house or at their place of work. They're purely relying on their cell phone. And that creates a lot of constraints. And another problem is, is mobile data usage, that although a lot of people have unlimited data plans, there are still plenty of capped data plans. What we looked at specifically was if you remove a major constraint on mobile internet service, which is the data cap, could that reduce digital inequality, in particular between low and high socioeconomic status households? And the way we did it was we, we had uh, detailed subscriber data from a telecommunications company. We observed how much data people used and whether they switched to an unlimited data plan when that became available in January of 2016. As you can imagine, everybody who switched to an unlimited data plan did consume more data. Uh, so if you think of someone in uh, urban Atlanta, for example, he or she is subscribing more. But more interesting to us is that folks who were in rural parts of the country consumed even more than even within an urban location. Someone who is in a lower socioeconomic zip code, for example, consumed even more. What's more interesting in this data that this company had is they had categorized the type of information people were consuming and of specific interest to us was educational data. And that got us thinking about, let's examine the educational data per se and see if there's anything interesting happening. And we were really delighted to find that these folks in rural areas or in the low socioeconomic zip codes were actually consuming more educational data than the folks who were well off. Everyone used more, but the disadvantaged households used a lot more. You could quantify it as two to three additional electronic textbooks per month was the difference in their consumption increases. If everybody increases their data usage proportionately or consistently, then the gap persists. If we want to close a gap, we have to have a catch-up situation. The findings inform telecommunications policy in particular, the Federal Communication Commission's inquiry into mobile data caps, which they launched in 2023, and looking at the effect of mobile data caps on disadvantaged households. An outcome of that inquiry may be a policy proposal to regulate data caps or to even outlaw them. The question then becomes, would that have desirable effects? You could argue that maybe they wouldn't, that if you remove these constraints around data use for disadvantaged households, that they wouldn't, in fact, increase their use of education data. What our research shows is that indeed these households do increase their consumption of education data when that constraint is relaxed. This is really interesting because that gives us some insights as to the behavior of folks that given this opportunity to participate in the digital economy, they are able to do that now with this unlimited mobile data plan. We hope that findings like ours will help policymakers in the FCC come up with better recommendations to help address this digital inequality.